The Hero's Journey, a Mindful Accord podcast, with your host, Rich Decker. Hello, and thank you for taking some of your valuable time to listen to the show. If you enjoy this show and have been inspired by this episode or another episode, I would encourage you to join our Patreon page. For those who are unfamiliar with Patreon, it's a platform that allows artists and content creators to build relationships with their audience, while at the same time earning enough money to keep providing the content. When you join our community, you will gain access to exclusive content such as live guest Q&As, behind the scenes, and other exclusive offers. And you can join for as little as $1 per month. There's a link in the show notes that'll take you directly to our page. This is part two of my talk with cancer survivor Robert Harrion. Robert has survived a three-year-long battle with stomach cancer and all the complications that go along with that. My talk with Robert had a major impact on me in many ways, but for one, it changed my eating habits. Robert had a scare about six months ago that he talks about in this episode when he discovered some possible pre-cancer cells in his abdomen. Faced with that, he decided to change one thing, his diet. He stopped eating meat except for the occasional fish, and his condition has improved. I have since stopped eating meat. Although I feel that Robert's greatest lesson he has to teach us is that we should focus more on what we can let go of rather than what we can gain in this life. This is part two of The Hero's Journey of Robert Harrion. Enjoy. The best way I can describe it is, okay, you, ha- you have visions, right? You, where, you, where you see things, you know, where you, you, you can call it daydreaming, whatever you want to call it. You have visions of things, things that you desire or things that are pleasant to you. But then... In a spiritual realm, you're fed, you're painted a picture in a way that has no words necessarily. It's just this feeling you get that, okay, I understand. I understand that. Even without words, it's like, I hear you. Even though sometimes there are, you know, it is actually words, you know, that I hear, but in this case, it was just, as you put it, a a feeling that this is the message that's being sent. And it was strong enough to where I could put it into words. For you, where does that message come from? It, It just comes from the undescribable higher authority. Somehow, for we created before, before our parents created us, their parents created them going way back as far as you want to. Something created something that we continue to create. And what that is, of course, no one knows. People try to describe it. People try to you know, give it names. But there's no way to describe that. It just is what it is. It's the all, the divine presence, if you will the creator of all. You're back home. I'm assuming you went home Mm -hmm. after the the third surgery. Yeah. And you're beginning the recovery. What, what is, what is the recovery? What do you, how do you, how do you rehabilitate from that level of devastation for your body? Well, believe it or not, that's when it really got hard going home. And you don't have all the nurses checking on you and the doctors making their rounds and, you know, you don't have your panic button yeah. <laughs> or your pain, your pain button. If you need, yeah. the, you need a little dose you know, of pain medication, you don't have those things anymore. All you have is your caretaker. And that happened to be my wife. And that's what really, really made it hard because... You know, my wife, God bless her, because she, for 33 nights, 
she slept on an air mattress on the floor in my hospital room because she wanted to be by my side as close as possible every night. Didn't miss a night. Didn't miss a day of work. Still being mom to our three daughters. And, and of course, trying to take care of herself at the same time. And I can't imagine the emotional stress involved with that. And then to have your husband come home bedridden, still hooked up to getting, you know, getting nutrition from an IV now. You know, having, you know, I had a, had, had different complications while I was in the hospital. One of them happened to be a, a blood clot. So I'm having to take medications uh, to, uh, for the blood clot, you know, so it doesn't, you know, reappear. And, you know, she had to give me this painful shot every day, every night. So, but yeah, she had, she, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. I, <laughs> I couldn't give myself that shot. It was, it was that painful for some reason. It's just so painful. And she had to do that, you know, and, and she had to help me clean myself and everything was just so new. You know, she had to change out my nutrition, you know, my, my bag, you know, reattach it to the IV and, you know, reconnect it and do all those things. And, she just, she did it all. At first, though, I was getting all nutrition, you know, from an IV. The day I went home, I was able to finally start trying to eat solid foods and drink, you know, liquids. Because for 33 days, I had no, nothing through my mouth. It was all through a tube or IV. It's I so could dry. It yeah, yeah. I did, you know, those lemon swabs. Yeah. I never want to have one of those in my mouth <laughs> ever again, ever again. Uh, every day and night. You want a lemon? So yeah, I guess if that's all I can have, okay. So what was that just to keep it moist? Or? Yeah, just to, just to keep it moist and to give you this sensation of flavor. Yeah, right. Yeah. You probably couldn't brush your teeth, could you? No, yeah. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't brushing my teeth. Well, not at first, but eventually I, I was brushing my teeth. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, even that was a struggle. I, I got winded just trying to brush my teeth. That's how weak I was. Unbelievable. Describe your first meal after 33 days. What did you eat? My first meal was applesauce, cream of wheat, and jello. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did it taste good? Mm mm. You know, I, I, I enjoyed the, uh, I did enjoy the cream of wheat and, and the um, applesauce. Yeah, there was something about that. It was just, it was just so good. The Jello, it was, it was so much sugar that I got, I just got this, oh, this overwhelming sugar rush thing that happened, and I, I felt, ugh, I just felt like, really, yeah, it, it was, I didn't, it, that didn't feel good at all. So I, I didn't enjoy that. But that, that cream of wheat and applesauce was on point. Yeah, definitely. Now, how, how was your wife doing this? How was she taking care of you and working and taking care of your daughter? I don't. How did she do that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I should, I'm, I'm yeah, serious. You call her. <laughs> I yeah. I'm just simply amazed and and so grateful that she was able to withstand that. I mean, I really don't know. I mean, she because you know eventually her aunt would come over and cook and you know help you know do things with me, but all the the medical attention outside of you know the Every three or four days, you know, a, a, um, a home care nurse would come, you know, visit and, you know, help me do some things and, and uh, learn, you know, some, my new lifestyle and, um, you know, rehab, um, rehab uh, physical uh, rehabilitation as well. But, yeah, she was doing everything. I can't imagine having that responsibility of all of that right. all all at once just out of nowhere just just thrown on you like that what has she said to you since how, how, well i'm sure you've asked her oh yeah we've how, we've, how we've, we've we've had several conversations about it you know she's you know she she uh went through something mentally behind that as as you know you can imagine and so we've had to talk through that pray through that at one point 
you know, we were actually going to seek professional help for her, you know, consultation, you know, consultations and, and, you know, we were just searching for something. But eventually we, once she got to know what I was going through, a kind of a tit for tat type of a thing. Yeah. Because I was going through something, she was going through something, but we were there for each other. Was it depression, resentment? Yeah, all of that. Yeah. I don't know about resentment, but just the depression was hard to be, it was hard to stay positive with all that was going on. Right. Yeah. Now, what what was your state then? Were you depressed? Were you happy? I, I, was, I was battling depression as well, yeah. yeah. Just really just, because it was, it, you know, it was hard to sleep. The sun would come up and, you know, if you were, if I did get some sleep, I would wake up and, yep, that bag is still hanging off my stomach. Or, <laughs> yep, that, that IV is still sticking in my arm and that pick line is still going through my, you know, underneath my bicep there. And, yeah, it was just, it was like, yeah, nothing's changing. Like I'm not gaining weight yet, and I'm still not able to eat much, and it, it was it was really hard, and I was so weak, and it was hard. So yeah, I, kept I, you going. I well just just a lot a lot of people just say, all right, I'm done. This is it. No, this. trust me, I, I had those thoughts. I actually had thoughts of you know like where are my car keys? I'm just gonna go. <laughs> Let me get in the car and go somewhere and just never come back. No, I had those thoughts. Sure. That's that's how bad it was. And it was a battle. But when I look at my wife and I look at my daughters and realize they need me. I, I need them, of course, but just the thought that of life, their lives without me was was enough motivation to keep pushing, keep moving, keep living. Yeah. How long did it take you to, till you got the pick line, till you got the IV out, until you could have a somewhat normal life? How many months were we talking? It was uh, six weeks of the pick line, mainly for the nutrition. And then that, when, when we finally finally uh agreed you know between myself and my surgeon and nutritionist and, and uh, everybody involved we all agreed that okay yeah it's time to remove that and and just try to eat <laughs> as much as you can that was six weeks it was probably about the same time of of the uh those shots you know and and warfarin you know for for the uh to prevent the uh, blood clotting, but but it it took it took a long it took it took over a year to actually get to a point of feeling comfortable that I was eating enough. You know, I didn't I didn't I didn't start seeing weight gain until probably six months in because it was just so hard to eat and my stomach had shrunk. To basically nothing, and and so I, I couldn't eat a lot at one time. Cherry or something? Or no, grape or? no more, a little more than that. Like um, I would eat probably, like say for instance, if I had three or four tablespoons of mashed potatoes, that's all I could do at one time right. in the beginning, and then you know eventually I would you know increase it in, you know more and more and. Cereal, cereal was my best friend. <laughs> yeah, you know, because the good I cereal or the sugary cereal. Uh, it was it was uh, corn um, sugar frosted flakes. Oh, okay, yeah, that was my go-to because it was easy to break down and it was high in calories. You know, and mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes every day, all day. Do you eat mashed potatoes now? I I do, but I eat more like baked potato and and pan fried. No southern style. I'm from Mississippi, so I love my southern style yeah. potatoes. Yeah. So when did you when did you start to see light and, and see that? Well, you know, I, I might make it through this. I might live. Well, were you thinking that way the whole time? Well, I was thinking that the whole time, but when the light bulb came on, 
okay, I got home, it was September 9th. And so by November-ish, it had started, you know, to get cool. You know, the winter was coming, you know, if you want to call winter in Arizona, winter. Right. It was so, 100, in other words. <laughs> right. It was less than 100. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time, say, March came around, when it started to warm back up, I started to go outside for the first time. Because I, I, you know, I didn't, it was recommended and my wife wouldn't let me go outside because my immune system was so weak. Anything could have triggered an illness. An allergy or a cold could have really been detrimental for me because of the state of, of my immune system and body because I just, I, I just wasn't prepared to fight anything off at that, in that given state. So we thought, you know. And so... We were very protective, and, and so when I started going outside, you know, I would walk around the house and you know, exercise, you know, doing sit, do, in chair and leg lifts and all these things. But to actually be able to go outside and walk in the sun, that's when it started to open me up and say, you know what, I'm gonna be okay. Yeah, you know, there's something about the sun, that light. Just feeling the warmth. Yeah. It's like you really start to notice when you when you're that close to death, you really start to notice things like nature. Like you you don't just hear the birds, you're looking for the birds now. You yeah. don't you don't hear bugs, you see them crawling, you you know, you 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 hear the wind blowing and you you know, you look to see which direction is that coming from. You know, you just I don't know. It's just that you just you just become so close with nature and so close with things that are available to you that you otherwise would have just taken for granted. Do you feel like your thoughts slowed down that you're able to yes. see this now? Yeah, you're not cluttered with all the nonsense, right? Yeah, you just you're just taking what whatever the universe has to offer you. You like you're, you're just open to it now in that mo in the moment. You're in that moment. Were you like staying away from like social media and all that other stuff? I was, I was, I, I, yeah, what do they call it? A sabbatical from Facebook and all that stuff for a year. Yeah. Now what, was that conscious decision or it just happened? No, it was conscious. I, I didn't, you know, as you called it clutter, I think you said, yeah, I, I just didn't want all that, you know, plus I hadn't told anybody outside you of family. Kind of disappeared, man. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I hadn't told anybody outside of close family what I was going through. No, no one knew that I was, you know, dealing with with any of that, any of it. Well, yeah, why, why I just that, disappeared. Why that decision. Um, I guess I didn't want people feeling sorry for me. I wanted to fight this, and and know know that I know <laughs> that I'm going to live versus other, otherwise, you know, I was okay with just fading away. Say, okay, well, what happened? And then they, you know, find out. But mm -hmm. I just, I didn't want to reveal. I just, I don't know. I just, I just didn't want to reveal it. Of course, yeah, I pissed a lot of people off by doing that. But that was just my choice that I made. Was it kind of to keep negative influences out? Or? That yeah, that and and like, yeah, and just people just. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, so, yeah, oh, all yeah. the all that stuff. Yeah, all, yeah. I, I didn't want to hear all the whining and and maybe you should try this. Maybe you should try that. You know, yeah. you know. Hey, I'm selling this. Just use this magic juice. You know, you should try that. Yeah. You know, it heals cancer. Oh, I my, uh, I I you know I already have all that information and I didn't need to yeah. you know be inundated with it. So, you know, you hear the statement, everything you're, all, you're ever going to need is already within you. Did you discover that? Mm-hmm. Big time. That was, yeah, that was another reason why I knew that I just knew I wasn't going to die because I knew that I had whatever was within me and whatever was available to me, I was going to use that to live. And, and, and I did, and I still do today. I mean... You know, I'm, I'm eat, doing what I can to eat right and, you know, supplements and exercise and and exercising the mind. 
the mental the mental uh, mind and the spiritual mind is is so important. You know, you you have to take time for that. You know, you oh, have to you have to balance that with the right. physical. Do you think we're out of balance as a as a culture as a as a, as a society? Yes, it is. It, there's so much out of balance right now, and and, that, and that's the struggle. I mean, that's why every day you hear of someone that you know that has been diagnosed with something. You think that's the cause of of, of all this illness and disease in our? Culture? I think a lot of it is. Yeah. Yeah, what what do you think it has to do with food? Because I know you said you stopped eating meat recently. Yeah, I um, I mean, you know, I don't I don't want to get you know too much into talking about what they might inject in meats and GMOs and all that type of stuff. Yeah, we know we know that's out there, but just to you you have to listen to your body. Your body tells you what it needs. And then what it doesn't need, you know, when you when you eat something and your body reacts to it, there's a reason for that. Your body is saying, you know what, that wasn't a good idea. But the challenge is, and I'm guilty too, we're all so busy with all this nonsense. Mm -hmm. You don't listen. You don't you can't listen. listen, and and you and you, you can't hear it. It's and there. It's there. You can't hear. You it. can't hear it. Yeah, because you want the quick fix. Or you need the next distraction or the next thing. Or, right. I've got to make money. i got to do this. Right. i got to do that. Oh I, you know, oh, I want that on Amazon. I, I, get, right. I, I do it every week. <laughs> and, and, you, and you think you're doing the right things. You think you're on the right track. And then you, you see this news article. Oh, I didn't know that. Maybe I should try that route. When you're already on the right track. Now you want to try something else. Then another one comes out. You know, somebody else tells you something that they... They discovered, oh, maybe I should try that. It's just too much. So what's the right track? What's within you? What's, what your body what's, is what's, telling you? What's, what's in, within you? Yeah, you have to listen to your body. Your body tells you over and over again what it needs and what, what it doesn't need. So how do, you, how do you listen? You just do. You have to get quiet. You don't, you don't, there's no magic to it. You just do. You just listen. You just, yeah, you, you slow down long enough. Meditate, whatever it takes to go within and listen. You just have to. Because just like you're talking to me, you're looking at me right now, I know that there's a thought in your head that is telling you, damn it, Rich, I've told you time and time again, this is what you should be doing. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know it's there. Everybody has that. Sure. You know, we're, that's the way we're built. Right. Now, are you able, do you still keep all the clutter out and all that still? I, I keep most of it out. Yeah, it's just, if it's not necessary, then I don't include it in my life. How do it, you decide it, what's necessary? You just listen. Yeah, again, you, you, you go within. My wife, my wife calls it, she, she refers to it as an inside job. Mm. You have to keep it an inside job. Is that what sustained her through 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 your ordeal? Yeah, yeah. She went inside. She went inside. Um, you know, she would listen to, of course, friends and family and whatnot. But yeah, she would get into a quiet her quiet space and just listen, and then just say, "Okay, this is how it is." So there's nothing you can do to change it. So what do you do for you to make it better? So what do you say to someone that's afraid to look inside or said, I, I don't know how, but I don't know what's, I'm, I'm a little scared of what's there. Well, you know, and it's something because that, that's, that's actually a big problem for a lot of people is people are scared of the truth. When you look in the mirror, that reflection is the truth. And that's what you need to be listening to. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, okay, just like okay, the song Michael Jackson sang, Man in the Mirror, right? right? If you're listening to everyone else but yourself, then you're gonna you're gonna be confused and 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 you know everything is just gonna be in chaotic form for you. But until you just break down and listen to what's inside of you. Because everybody is individual, everybody is, is distinct, everybody has their own 
level of, 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 of intuition or spirituality or, or mentalness or, or anything, if you don't listen to that, then you'll always be operating on someone else's vibration. So how, how do you do that? I mean, you, you, you got, that got forced upon you. Yeah. How does someone that doesn't have cancer and is not going through what you want, how, how do they do that? What's the first step? I'm sure there's more to it, but what's the first step? The first step, like I said before, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror and ask yourself, what do I need? Whatever that answer is, that's where you start. What if it's, uh, I need a new Bentley? That you're, you're talking about something material. Oh, you're we're going within. Within. Yes. We're going Mind, within. body, spirit. Within. Yes. What yes. do I need? Within. What do you need? Okay. And listen. Not, not anything no, nothing tangible. Nothing not, tangible. Not, not, no. not a new laptop or no, a new 54 inch. Those are all the distractions you. that keep you from going within. Right. But just block it all out. Go within. Look in the mirror. Ask yourself, what do you need? And just listen. That's where that's where I start. Yeah. Is that something you do every day? Then? Not necessarily every day now, but when I was really going through, I would literally, any way I could, get up out of that bed and go lean over the sink, looking into the mirror, and talk to myself. And Physically, ask, like out loud, saying, out loud, Robert, what do, you, what do you need? Yeah, what do you need? Well, the first question that would always come out would be, are you okay? Are you okay? Mentally, physically, spiritually, are you okay? And I would answer that, you know, whatever would come. And then, yeah, the next question is, what do you need to do to beat this? So you're still focused on, I'm going to overcome this. Oh yeah, this is not the end. it's a that's a, it's a it's a daily grind. It is the daily grind. The daily focus is to continue to heal and stay healed. Yeah, and that that's 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 my new that's my new lifestyle. Staying healed. Staying healed. Yeah. What's involved in in being healed? Just like the, the main thing is just accepting what is. If, it, if it's something that you can't change, just accept what is and, and, and go from there. Don't look for what's in the future or what, you know, or what you might have done in the past, but what can you do now? Yeah. So what are your plans now now are you are you completely cancer free you're 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 healthy as you can be after that ordeal and right is that is that your state right now yes i i it's something that you asked that because every 90 days i get a um, another checkup if you will where i get a cat scan and blood work done just to see where my levels are and see where everything see see how everything looks and for the first two and a half years, the CAT scans revealed a slight um, reappearance of, of fluid and um, spots on, on my organs that could be beginning stages of, of regrowth of, of the uh, cancerous you know, clusters. Very, very, very slow growing, very, you know, just slight growth. We're talking like millimeter, you know, size growth. And so, you know, there was a, a, a bit of uh, nervousness, I'll say, I'll call it, about that. But I was still, you know, in my mind saying, no, nah, this, I'm, I don't care. I'm, I'm never going to go through this again. I'm going to beat this. And I, and I will be completely healed. And then... Lo and behold, another message <laughs> uh, was received that, you know, look into what meat does to your body. When I was 20, 
three, 24 years old, I stopped eating beef because it was just, I, I could just tell it was just beating up my body. It wasn't good for me. So I stopped. Then along the way, I stopped drinking milk. Just started cutting things out along the way. But then about six months ago, I um, stopped eating meat altogether. Every once in a while, I'll eat some fish, you know. But as far as uh, beef, pork, chicken, none. Of, I don't do any of that. And lo and behold, 90 days after becoming a uh, pescatarian, I went in for the CAT scan and blood work. And the CAT scan revealed not only did the, the spots stop growing, but some of the spots had actually reduced in size. And then the last 90-day checkup I had, which was about two weeks ago, the same thing. The CAT scan reveals that there was no growth at all, no change at all. So it, it, it has completely stopped. And the only thing I changed was I cut out meat. Do you, th I know you didn't say you didn't want to get into this, but do you think that it is the meat itself or all the junk they put in these animals now? Both. Both? Yes. I, I truly don't believe that we were built to eat meat. And then the more, and see, here's, here's something that's kind of odd. As I told you, I have this ileostomy because I don't have a colon anymore. So I have this ileostomy bag on my stomach now. And that's where all my, my waste comes out, the solid waste. And so I get to see what my body is actually absorbing or what it's kicking out as hey, we don't need that, so we're just going to dump that out. You have no idea, when I was eating meat, how much of that would just come out like I just chewed it up. It was just kicking it out. And, you know, because you could see it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's right there, you know, in front of you. And sad to say, but the, the, the smell of it, I knew when I ate meat, it, it wasn't a good scene. So now that I've stopped that, what comes out makes sense. There's literally hardly any smell to it. So it's like, huh. Well, it just came to me. I mean, do other primates, now we're all related to other primates. We, we evolved from we have common ancestors. They don't eat meat. They do don't. They? They're, they're, Gorillas, orangutans, monomonos. Yeah. They don't eat meat. The largest, strongest, you know, elephants, you know, all, all those big, strong, yeah, yeah, most of those, as you say, primates even, yeah, they, they, they're they pretty much vegetarians. Well, that's something and to think about. And they're some of the strongest beings in the world. Yeah, think about that. Would you say to someone... Don't eat meat, or would you say to them, listen to your body? Well, first of all, listen to your body. You know, because there's there's certain, you know, because then, then you can start, you get into, okay, there's, there's, you know, studies out there to show that certain blood types need meat, supposedly. Those studies are out there. Right. But knowing what I know now about the medical world and all that, you know, I, uh, okay. You know, it's amazing is, so we're, we're, we're talking about colonizing Mars, but yet we still can't figure out what we're supposed to eat. That's what I don't understand. Right. Somebody's got to know somewhere. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, you colonize Mars. So now you're going to, everything you eat is going to be out of a bag. And mm. it's not going to be meat. Probably, and and that's, and that's what's killing us now. Yeah. You know, the processed foods. You think so? You think that's well, I mean, I, again, I, you know, I don't know. I'm no, no authority on it. I just right. listen to my body. You are very attuned to that now, I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, I don't, I don't eat processed foods or, you know, I do, I do my green smoothies, you know, plant proteins. Like I said, I, I eat fish every once in a while, but for the most part, it's, it's plant-based you know, consumption. Now, what, what's your daily routine like? I mean, do you have a certain ritual you do every day to 
mentally and physically prepare yourself for the day? To to a certain extent, I do have a ritual, but then I really don't because I just get up every day just happy to be alive, number one. And I, and I'm, I, I, I just get up in a attitude of gratitude and I express that openly. And, you know, I, th- you know, I think about, you know, well, the, fir- the first thing I have to do is eat when I get up. <laughs> you know, the way my system is built, I have to eat. You know, wh- when I wake up, I'm ready to eat. And so that kind of like knocks me off of like any type of a ritual or, you know, just a, a, a schedule of things to do in the morning. I just get up, attitude of gratitude, and, and, and eat. And then, okay, well, what am I going to do today? And then just make it happen, whatever that is. I've, I've removed the, a lot of the, the stress involved with trying to stay on task and setting goals and all that stuff. Just first thing to do is just live. That's what's most important to me right now, just living. You know, and then as things come about, you know, I'm productive, but I don't set a schedule. You know, like, oh, you got to work out at two o'clock every day or you have to eat at this certain time or you're going to take a 15 minute break here or this is your reading time. Or, you know, this is where you're going to set aside time for family. And no, you just you just live and it's all going to happen anyway. You let it come to you as it comes. Yeah. The for, the, for, for the you're most flow. I go with I go with a flow, a natural flow, not a forced flow. That flow is determined by listening. Listening, yes, absolutely, yeah. You got it. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> you get me. <laughs> so, what are you doing now? You're, you, I know you're, you're starting to take what you've learned from your experiences and, and share it with others. Can you explain what you're doing now? Well, basically, I'm, I'm using my testimony, if you will, of my experience, and just being very transparent and very open about what I've gone through and what I'm still going through on a day-to-day basis. And that's actually turning into my platform of uh, becoming a public speaker, author. Because even before I was sick, I was, uh, I'd already, you know, written out a business plan of, you know, becoming a public speaker and author and I was writing a book and all this kind of thing. But none of that stuff matters anymore that I was going to talk about. To, right. a, to, a, to an extent. Let's just say the content has changed dramatically. And so now it's, it's really starting with my testimony of what I've been through and what I go through, what I'm still going through. That's just where I am right now. So you're probably going to be like uh, all the rest of us. Oh, here's how you be more productive and here's how you maximize your day. Right. And now, yeah. now your message is... Three, three, you know, five methods of high performance. And all, that, <laughs> all, you know, all this stuff, you know, right. That, right. That, that you get, you know, 50 different ways from, you know, 20 different people. Sure. Type of so a thing. What's your message now? <laughs> You know, that, that's actually a good question. Again, I just kind of go with the flow and whatever comes out, whatever, whatever, I'm, whatever I feel my spirit is led to reveal, that's, that's, what, that, that's how it comes. So what would your message be right now? Right now, you know, basically it's just, just to accept life as it is, embrace life as, as, as it comes, as it reveals itself. Allow yourself to awaken and, and, and receive what's available to you. And, and just, just listen to it. Just, just, just listen to it. Stay disciplined within yourself. And, and, and don't let the world, worldly matter worldly matters affect you so much listen to yourself listen to yourself ask what do, what do i need yeah what do you yeah ask you yeah look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself what do i need not 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 nothing not, sphere, not material not materialistic stuff but inner what do you need what do you need what does this life at this moment at this moment now need? yes not what you want 
Now, yeah, now what you want, now what you desire, what, what do, you do you need? need? What's necessary for your life right now? That is so contrary to almost the entire world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Again, this out of balance world that right. we live in. Yeah, right. yeah. Because everybody's living in an outer experience and not an inner. So you're almost like a Taoist, you know, living the Tao. Yeah. Living the flow. I, I can, I, I, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Since you don't have goals anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? What? <laughs> yeah. So why do you want to do this? Why do you want to go and talk to people and write about it and share your share what you have to say? Because, you know, some of these guys like the, uh, uh, I think of Ramana Maharishi who had this, uh, he had basically had a, a, like a near-death experience when mm -hmm. he was 16 and then he, then he just left and he went and lived in a cave in South Oh, India. yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> he wasn't looking for anybody. Somehow they found him. Right. And most of the time he didn't even talk, but people would travel around the world just to be mm -hmm. with this guy. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of how you feel? Like, I don't really have any goals. If you want to listen, listen. If not, that's fine too. That's kind of where it is. But what I'm really finding out is, as, as I'm becoming more and more transparent with my experience and really revealing everything is that not only am I helping other people to realize that they're not alone in what they're going through, but I'm also ministering to myself, healing myself from a mental, spiritual standpoint as, as well as the physical. So it's just a win-win right. situation right now for me. You know, it's just not all about me and getting my message out there and you know, if you want to listen, listen. But th this is this is helping me too. So it's more about giving than gaining. Absolutely, giving is everything. First, forgive, then give. Well, that's a good message. Again, um, it's for those of us who hadn't been through what you through it been through. It's easy to say. It's pretty damn hard to do. <laughs> you know, because we're we're trapped in ourselves, right? Right. It's how to. Do you feel like you've escaped the prison of self a little bit? Like where you're just so wrapped up in your own nonsense? Yeah, because you, you know, we're, we're taught to live with expectation. We're actually, we're, we're taught to give to receive. Yeah. Think about that for a second. Instead of just giving. Well, even, even people that are givers, oh, if you want to be a good getter, you got to be a good giver. Right. Well, you're expecting something in return. Uh, yeah, always. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Now it's just, if I get something back, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. But if I don't, it's okay. I still, I'm still going to give what I have. It's kind of like uh, Kung Fu with uh, David Cassidy. You just <laughs> Grasshopper. <get> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna travel around. If you want to listen, great. If not, well, that's okay. Yeah. You know, it's just you know, it's funny you brought that brought that up because that it brings to mind also. You know, a lot of people don't realize that Jesus actually said they were trying to you know say, hey, let's let's build churches. He's like, no, don't build a church for me. I'll just go preach on a hill. They'll come to me, yeah. or, or or go preach in you know the synagogues that's already built. So, yeah, just wherever he went, that's where the message was. He wasn't looking for you. You, you know, you're seeking him. So wherever it goes, man. So what What are your, I guess you don't have plans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have any plans. You know? You're right. So someone wanted to get a hold of you and perhaps have you come speak at, at whatever event or whatever. How would they find out more information about you? Well, the, I mean, if you're not following following me on Facebook or Instagram, Twitter, you know, LinkedIn, those types of things, YouTube, you can always look, you know, find me on my website at robertharian.com. Plain and simple. A tab that says contact or book me. So it's very simple. Just reach out. Let's talk about it. Let me know how may I, how, how I may serve. What would you say to your younger self, meaning the self prior to hearing the words cancer 
what would you say to yourself now? Mm. And what would you, if you could go back and, and, and talk to Robert at that moment, what would you say? I guess one of the things that, that, that you know, that I, that I actually like to say at this point is to stop trying so hard and, and, and searching for purpose of life and just live a life of purpose instead. How does, that, one, how does one live a life of purpose without desire? Well, that's the whole thing. You remove desire. You know, you're, you're going to have, naturally, as, as human beings, we're going to have desire. We, yeah, we desire this, we desire that thing. But again, it has to be necessary for me now. If it's not necessary, then I don't need it. I don't desire it. I just desire joy. I desire living. I desire healing. Those are my desires. If if I happen to get a new car or, you know, if I happen to be able to travel somewhere in the world or someone gives me a gift of some sort, gratitude. Thank you. But I don't desire that. It just happens as I live, as I heal. So your desire is, I just want to live. I just want to live and find joy. Yeah. And, and everything else that comes along with that, so be it. How does one who's juggling all these things and say you're a single mom and two kids and three jobs and mortgages and all this, how, how, how do you find joy? Well, I hate to keep going back to it, but remove anything that's unnecessary from your life. Simplify. And then the rest of it, <laughs> you created it, deal with it. Right. What about yeah. the, in the digital world we live in now with all this, you know, the phones and everything? Mm -hmm. Do you think that's really necessary or is it just an addiction? Or? Well, it, it's definitely an addiction because it's, I mean, we all feel like we have to have it. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're... You know, we're doing this to create an online presence. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah, right. And using our phones to film it and right. you know, yeah. My phone's right over there. Compu right? Yeah, computer. I'm not, I'm not too you know, upset right now. I know where exactly computers, where it is. you know. Yours is right there. Computers, you know, to, mine's right there. <laughs> you know. So that's the world we live in. You know, sure. it's it's technology driven. So there's no way around that anymore. But yeah, the the uh, addiction to it is is kinda frightening in a way you can go to a restaurant or, or even a park this is what got me a couple of weeks ago I, I, I go to this park it has lakes at it you know natural uh habitats you know for uh, ducks and other types of uh, animals and you know you're you're really in touch with nature in this location and i'm looking at the people walking around and there's several people walking their dogs or just, you know, maybe it's a couple walking together. Everybody had their nose in their phone. Mm -hmm. They weren't they weren't experiencing the natural environment, the natural surroundings. They weren't getting in touch with nature. They were in their phones, even in that type of environment. And I was really amazed because I, I purposely leave my phone in the car when I go for a walk. You know, I want I want to I want to hear the water running. I want to hear the ducks quacking. I, you know, I want to hear the birds chirping. I want to hear the the beetles or whatever that is in the trees making that hissing sound. You know, I want to hear. I want to take it all in. But if you're in your phone, you're missing all of it. Yeah. If you're, you're, it's just distraction. Yeah, another distraction. So we just, we can use this to, I mean, it's not, like you said, it's not going anywhere. It, it's not going anywhere. It, it's, it's made us really, uh, unlike any other people alive as far as like where we are as, as a species, as mm -hmm. far as like, although there's a lot of people starving and what have you in the world, it's a pretty good time if you're a human. Maybe. Yeah. If you're not a human, you're another animal or something, or the planet itself, look out. But uh, 
we could use that, but do you feel like we should be taking breaks like regularly from all this? Absolutely. Just, like completely disconnecting? Absolutely. You think it should be something done daily, weekly, monthly? Yeah, you yearly? should. I mean, no, you literally, you know, should have a cutoff time, especially at night, to just put all technology down. Shut the phone off. Shut the computer off. Give your si- give yourself time to go within and be at peace when you go to sleep. And not with all the clutter, not with all the, the thoughts of what if, what if I would have done this today? What if I would have done that? Or what do I need to do tomorrow? You know, what's on my task list for tomorrow? What are my goals for the week? You know, you go to, you go to bed with that on your mind yeah. and, 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 and you, you don't, you don't get that, that peaceful sleep that's available to you. So, yeah, I mean, we literally try to cut our phones off and, and, Stop looking at social media, all, you know, any of that stuff after eight o'clock so that we have at least two to three hours to just go within and, and listen. You and, and your empty nest wife? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we would, we would, we would encourage our daughters to do the same thing though. Yeah. So ho- hopefully they're listening <laughs> and, and, and still, still adhering to that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Daddy's watching. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Whether you know it or not. <laughs> well, do you have anything you want to say in, in parting words or anything you'd like to share that you didn't have an opportunity to, to share? The only thing that I, I, would, I would add would be just to, just to keep listening and keep moving. What do you mean by moving? Mo- moving mo- in, in every sense. In a physical sense, whether whether it's exercising or just going up, going for a walk, or keeping your body in motion, keeping your your mind in motion, keep elevating, keep growing, always be progressing. Yeah, yeah. Keep keep learning. You know, there's there's a difference between filling your tank with information and growing with information that's available to you. And then, you know, from a spiritual sense, just really take time to go within and ask yourself what you need so that you can recognize what, what, what's, what's available to you and, what, and what, what, as you need it, you'll find that it, it is available. Now, do you see a cancer now, a curse, a blessing, or are you indifferent? Well, the only, the only way I can look at it at this point is is a true blessing because it, it it's given me the opportunity to remove the clutter remove the distractions from my life and and just really just focus on what's what 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 my life needs to live and, and to find joy in that life so if someone's asking themselves what do i need how do you avoid becoming a narcissist <laughs> everything starts with you anyway and you have to love yourself first anyway and you have to you have to believe in yourself first even if no one else does you know your truth your truth which will set you free <laughs> your truth is different from 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 mine but if you're not listening then you you'll you'll miss it you 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 won't you won't be able to experience your truth, your your freedom, the liberation that comes with whatever your truth is. If that makes any sense at all. A little bit. Okay. I think again, you gotta find that within you. Right. right? Whatever that yeah, is. Yeah, whatever that is. So what do you what do you say to the guy or the gal that's so driven and wants to conquer the world? If that's what you feel you need to do, go do it. And do it well. If that brings you joy, yeah. and that if that's what your assignment is on this earth, then go do it and do it well. You think but, we're given assignments? Oh yeah, you do. Oh yeah, and that and that, that might be part of the problem of of why you know everything is in turmoil too, because everyone's trying to do each other's assignment and not sticking to their own. I think I'm going to know the answer. Uh Uh-oh. How do you find your assignment? Listen. 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 
It, it, it's so important. You have to take time to listen. You got to be quiet. Because even right now, we're talking, and I know you're already thinking ahead, like, what do you have to do to edit this and do that? And <laughs> oh, no, no. Where are you, you going to post it? And Please, I'm always in the moment. Please. <laughs> the moment. Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, just you got to take that time. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to miss it. And, and before you know it, 60 years old, 70 years old, God willing, 80 years old or, or more. And you look back and think about those missed moments where all you had to do was just slow down and listen just for a little bit. Give yourself that time. So when the end does come for you in this life, mm -hmm. how do you think you'll be complacent, acceptance, just letting go, or what, what do you think would, would happen this time? Well, like I said, at, at this time, death death is not anything that I fear any longer. So when it's time for me to go, it's just, just, it's just time. It's just time, and I'll be at peace with wherever I am, because wherever I am, that's where I am. Right. You know, and there's nothing more I can do at that moment. Yeah. It's it's done. Do you think we determine our lives or do you think they're already determined? Do you think free will exists? Ooh. See, now you're trying to get deep on me, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. So if we're given assignments, then do we have free will? We have free will. Okay. Even with assignments, you still have free will because you still make the decision whether you're going to stick to your assignment or go do something else. So there is free will, yes. Even even with assignments, but you have to listen. But you, <laughs> you gotta listen. I can't tell you what your assignment is. Yeah, you probably already know what it is. But is that what you're really? Are, are you are you hearing it? Number one, and number two, are you adhering to it? So it goes back to the old uh, Joseph Campbell: follow your bliss. Yeah, that's that's. That's one great way to put it. Follow your bliss and what used to be uh, walls will become doors. Mm, yeah. 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 And, be, and, be, and before you realize or, or get to that, you know, before you raise that, that level of what's called bliss, you first have to find joy and peace. Peace. We have to listen. Yeah. Starts with listening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Robert. It was incredible. I, I I hope I can take what you said and, and listen, <laughs> <laughs> right, and apply it in my life. But it's not always easy. No, it's not. Fortunately, you're still here to remind us. Yes, and I hope that you're able to convey that message more because it's so contrary to mm -hmm. the world we live in that it's a message I think needs to be heard because, you know, the, the future is always unknown. Right. But we just have to stop and be quiet and, and listen. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for listening. And please leave any comments or suggestions. We're always looking for ways to improve our show and make it the best show it can possibly be. Visit mindfulaccord.com where you can find additional episodes and you can follow our blog. We give some helpful information on mindfulness, meditation, and just ways to manage our everyday stressful lives. And most importantly, if you know of a friend or a family member that would benefit from this story, please share it with them. Until next time, I'm Rich Decker.